think of everything as one giant visual puzzle. Mm -hmm. And I've sort of always thought of it that way. Like in when I grew up, our family didn't go to museums. There weren't, weren't art books in the house, but everybody made things with their hands. And so that's just what you did. Mm. You made rock walls like you quilted. You know, my father made model ships. My mother threw pots. Like yeah. there was always a, a workshop in the, you know, in the basement or the garage. We moved all the time, but there was always a workshop. And mm. like from the time I was really little, I could go and like, you know, use the torches and the hammers and the chisels. And you yeah. know, there was no like, oh, no, you can't touch that. You're just a kid. Yeah. Wow. Kind of thing. So. And was there a thought towards creativity or it was just like a way of life, you know, like just just that's what you did. My grandfather, you know, everybody made just made things. Yeah. Just, just like so for me, the the what I'm doing with my hands is connected to to what I'm doing with my eyes and the puzzle. So, 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 so suppose there wasn't any such thing as art, okay? right? Like you would still, anybody would go and like in your room, you would pull your rocking chair closer to the wall or farther away from the wall, or you would move, or you would on the table, you would move the bowls around until they pleased you, yeah. Right. So why are you doing that? Like, what's what's the thing that makes everybody feel happier when, or it's more pleasing when things are? You take rocks, you arrange them like you know, arrange them this way, arrange them that way, or bowls or whatever. Food in the pot, you know, like how you're cooking, the colors, yeah. you're arranging them. So what is that thing? What is it that we're all trying to look at to arrange that makes us feel pleased? Then you could take that and you could go, that's also what makes writing songs, right? Because you're in the same way that art materials like so I have a piece of iron and I have a piece of paper, but there's a way I can, I can, I can, if I put them in a certain position, then they balance each other. Then I put another one, then you can balance like things with weight or you can balance it with color, right? Like red's heavier than green, mm-hmm. right? So, so that's a balance, like in just like food, you know, one taste balances another in music, or poetry, or there's certain words that have more weight. There are certain notes that last longer, and the space between the word, the word or the note that's heavier or lighter, means that the song or the poem works, or it doesn't work. And not in a like, oh, I'm gonna. Not in a way that you can think out, but you arrange and you arrange, and then ah, there it is, and. And if you, so there's an old fashioned word that's called like sublime, mm-hmm. right? And, and there's a certain feeling that it's associated with it, sort of like um, this awe and terror and, but, but, oh, I've hit on this thing. They're, they're like, for it, like you go along in your life and, and it's just da 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 da. And then one day you like look up at the sky or you walk into a room and something hits you about like the way that, that, uh, I don't know, the light hits a, I don't know, you have a block on the table and the light hits it in a certain way and you see it and all of a sudden, you you have this like moment of clarity like oh my life is happening right now Hmm. right and 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 it's the same like or a certain passage in a song or you're reading a book and one little thing jumps out at you and makes you it's a feeling like you remember something that you can't and it's a little moment of, ah, there it is. So that's sort of what I'm always looking for is if you can arrange things in just that right way, that's sort of like mm, in anything, in a mm-hmm. rock wall, in a soup, in a, you know, in a painting. 
Yeah. And the more the more I practice it, the better I get at it. So when I first became conscious of it, I was doing it with like geometric shapes. Like I would just set myself exercises of like uh, so I bought these um uh, there's a guy in Maine that makes wooden balls and cubes mm-hmm. and so I got like a whole a uh, couple boxes of wooden balls and cubes yeah. right and then so if you take a, a certain size like keep the size of the plane the same right and you take three balls of different sizes and you arrange 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 and it's wrong 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 until all of a sudden ah, it's right and so mm-hmm. and when it's right there's a certain it's almost like a little click in yeah. your head and so that tells me it's math, right? Because there's only one way it goes. So I started off with those and then then like I'd add an odd shape. Like the one in the other room with this with the like I think I got three balls, a triangle and a bunch of snakes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so then the snakes, like so I'm I'm like arranging those in like move, 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 and then juxtapose those. So then I've got, you know, shapes, irregular shapes with geometric shapes. And then so once I do that, then see like I can go on to the ones I call the floaters. So I start out with three, five, seven or nine blobs of different sizes. Mm -hmm. And then I'll spend a week or two like arranging the, the different blobs on the on the, yeah. and then I glue them down and then I keep painting. So it's it's sort of it's yeah, it's all the same thing. Yeah. So you're kind of like a moment of clarity junkie or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, n- yeah, not that I get there. It's the the it's cuz it's really really rare and ah. you you hardly ever ever get there but it's like a thing to strive for yeah right that's does it not happen with every piece you create oh no oh no really oh no 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 wow okay no no it's extremely rare it's like so so one time i i saw it in a malevich painting yeah and and it was just the simplest small painting of of two uh squares that were juxtaposed with each other in just this certain way and it opened up like that door Mm. and 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 it was the same thing you know there's Pierre della Francesca's that I've seen it in but it's rare Mm. so every piece that you do is a searching for that clarity well that and and I mean that sounds so serious and yeah, formal, right. <laughs> right? But no, no, that's like that's like one part yeah, of it. Okay, okay. The other part is like I'm cracking myself up too. Yeah. So I've got all the blobs, right? Like so, I'm saying three, seven, you know, three, five, seven, or nine blobs. Yeah, but then one of them is like a flying penis that's like bringing flowers to the flying <laughs> vagina, right? So I'm doing that because it cracks me up. Yeah, on yeah. The, or like, you know, in the other room, like lately they've been getting, because I'm so angry all the time oh. about about, um, about our... The it, world, it, yeah. Well, Politics. And- yeah, yeah. So... So I'm listening. So I'm working on my little like moving colors and shapes around to get them the way I like them. And then I'm listening to the radio. And and so like the one with the Odalesque in there. And I try not to let it in too much, but sometimes I can't help myself. So yeah. so I was uh, listening to the Kavanaugh hearings. Yeah, right. Right. And in almost exactly the the same thing happened to me when I was 15 as happened to Dr. Ford. Yeah. And so uh, the idiot talking about how, oh, well, you should have gone to the cops. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Like that would, you, I would have been expelled. I would have, you know, it, it just never would have, it, you weren't able to do that back then. I can't remember how I got there, how I got back. So in my painting, you notice the severed head and the, and the, um, there's a guy with a robe on and a beer, mm-hmm. which sort of cracked me up. I like beer. Yeah. Do you like beer? <laughs> 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 wow, so you're you're not completely processing all the time outwardly on your work, but it does you're saying it does seep in there. Yeah, it's like a big giant pot of 
soup so everything like that it's been boiling on the stove for what yeah. 60 years or, yeah 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 and so so it's all the pieces like from you know the time i was five and 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 i first found out about well like when i was five my dad who was an engineer he had a blackboard in the attic and he would draw pictures of atoms and so to learn i had to learn the uh, table of elements and the structure Mm. of an atom but my grandmother at her farm in maine she had a big plate uh by by the bed where I slept in sometime, and it had a painting on it of this bare-breasted Amazon with a spear killing a guy, <laughs> wow. right? So so in my atomic theory with dad thing, we're getting down to like, so if you crack open the nucleus of an atom, then there's mesons. So I, for a long time, thought if you cracked open an atom, there would be bare-breasted women with spears. <laughs> <laughs> At like yeah yeah okay so and that's how paintings work is 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 for me it's like all the dots right yeah. so this comes from here and this comes from here and this might be old and this might be in the you know pa- every painting I've looked at in or sculpture or you yeah. know, pile of burlap sacks in a barn that struck me in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of all in there, and then stuff floats to the top, and then I grab it. And and so I had always called that the place, like, where it comes from. Mm-hmm. I had always called that secretly to myself. Yeah. I had called it behind the veil. Yeah, yeah. Right? But, like, I hate woo-woo shit, so... So I never would, I kept that to myself that I thought of it that way. Like it would be like, oh, and then, you know, the rip would be there and stuff would come through and then it would close up again. And, and then like, I don't know, it was a long time ago. There was a Francis Bacon show at MoMA and I went and there in big text on the wall, Francis Bacon is talking about, oh yeah, from behind the veil. And I'm like, whoa, okay, it's a thing. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not crazy if I talk about this if, yeah. if Francis Bacon can <laughs> talk about it that that is one of the I would have loved to have gone drinking with him yeah yeah that I'm sorry he died <laughs> before I get a chance to to do that but but so that's the thing is leaving the door open like you got to sort of you got to keep working all the time that's why i'm so selfish with my time Mm. it's because so when it's open everything's easy and and you can only keep it open by working every day yeah do you feel like this behind the veil is something that everyone has access to or do you feel like it's just something rare or something that you've discovered i have well, I mean, I, mean, do, I mean, obviously, Francis was talking about it, but do, have you heard other people kind of relate this a similar thing to you? It's not something I, you know, like, oh, let's sit around and yeah, talk, talk about, about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's something that you have to foster and pay attention to and nurture, you're saying, in a way. Yeah. You have to, like, really kind of yeah. give yeah. space for it. Yeah. And yeah. you're saying that that's where a lot of the imagery and ideas and compositions for your work come from? Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. And, and a lot of it is having long pieces of time where you're not getting, you're not getting interrupted. That, yeah. that like, so that's why I don't have a cell phone. And that's why you live in Marfa. Yeah, Probably. and that's and that's why I live in Marfa yeah. because I can I can be working and then I can go out, walk to town, get the mail, walk back, and nothing nothing I can stay in my painting. Mm. And when I get back, I can just pick up the brush and go right back to where I I left off. There's no I don't get in the car drive out into traffic, someone cuts me off, you know, like yells, fuck you, and right. blows their horn at me, and then I get to the post office. And you know, it's frazzled. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I get back in the mm. same, in the same, I can go right back and connect. My dots are right where I left them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like you're really protecting your practice 
what is the importance of your practice though? Do you feel like that you have to protect it so strictly? Like oh, why? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's obvious, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. you know, cause I'd go nuts if okay. I didn't. I, yeah. I'm, I'm really, uh, if I don't work all the time, I get, I get unhappy. I start to, like, if I go more than 10 days, I start to have bad dreams. Mm. Yeah. So really creating work for you is, it's a completely selfish thing. It's not about oh, yeah. any, it's not for the world. It's not for anybody else at it's all. Com- it's, it's not to make money. It's not anything. It's just, it's not to change well, someone no, else's life. No, no, no. Money's or... good. Money's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, no, because I, that's money. I wouldn't have the time yeah, and right. the space right. to make work if I didn't make money at it because... Then I'd have to, you know, I mean, I did that where you, where I had a, I mean, for many, many years, I had to have like a job to support my art habit. And it's really hard when you're working, you know, all day on like, and you know, most of the jobs I had were like manual labor kind of jobs. And, you know, I come home like uh, dragging my ass up the last flight of stairs. and, And so it was really hard to, to keep up the practice then. So you know, it was, it was, um, when I first could sell enough paintings to make enough money to live, it was like, oh, real relief to yeah. be able to, it, and my nightwares went away and, and you know, oh, wow. I was just like a way happier person. Yeah. It kind of makes me wonder about like, you know, it's so easy to see all your work now and, and see how skillful it is and. I just, you know, it's like the the one thing that we don't see in another artist is like the thousands of hours of like grueling practice and trying, right? I mean, you know. Well, I mean, not grueling. It's I not mean, grueling. No, no. But I mean, it's, it's like just to get to the level where you can do what you can do now. It's like nobody s- saw that, but you had to put in all those hours. Well, but I mean, that's like almost anything that yeah. you would, that you would, whatever Whatever you do, you know, if you're learning an instrument, it takes a long time to learn the instrument well enough that you can, that you can go. Well, I was, I was actually, I was talking to a guitar player about this and, you know, just, he was saying, yeah, you put in like hours and hours and hours. So then like the music goes straight from your, you don't have straight from your, from your brain and out like you don't have to be like fumbling around with your fingers trying to oh you know where's how do I because there's only there's only so many ways a curve works and if you're taking if you've got a brush full of paint and you're painting a long curve that goes this way and this like if you can't do that then then you got to change your mind about what the picture it changes the picture so it's just useful yeah to be able to have that flexibility because then all paths are open right because you're not shut off by oh i don't know how to do that or you know i'm gonna have to stop for four weeks and learn how to do that or yeah yeah. i mean do you feel like you've mastered your processes oh no no, no, I'm, I know I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out new stuff all the time. And a lot of it is just like when I, I quit art school and, uh, it would have been so a lot of stuff I taught myself and, and, uh, found out the hard way. Yeah. That's what I was asking, yeah. trying to get to before yeah. is like the years of, I mean, oh, it's not yeah. easy, yeah. obviously, well, teaching but yourself all this stuff. Right, but it beats, you know, my other jobs were like I cleaned stalls and like worked on, you know, f- like picked up bales of hay and stuff. Yeah, okay. So, so like, yeah, so it's not easy, but it's not roofing. <laughs> it's not r- tar roofing in Texas in the summer. Like, yeah, you true. know, yeah, true. yeah. Yeah, you were, there was a thought you were going with, um, what were you saying? Because I'd asked you about, oh, yeah. I mean, you have to imagine that people looking at your work would think that you've mastered something regarding <laughs> art painting or collage. I mean, right? I mean, you you can, you could see that, right? You don't think people think that you're... I don't, some, that's like some days, some days I look at them and I think, oh, that's just right. And then, and then some days, like, especially my older paintings, I see them and just go, 
oh my god you know i want to change that like oh yeah you know like i was having a show uh at the austin museum years ago and i got back all these paintings i hadn't seen in a while and it was like some of them i had to when i was varnishing them or you know i was i wanted to change them yeah yeah i and i will sometimes buy back my old work and burn it Oh my goodness! What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, okay. So, are you being hard so, on yourself? Or, so, are... so Sean Colvin. One time, I I went over to her house and and uh, I went in her guest bathroom and there was this really old print of mine that was yeah. like off. Oh, shit like <laughs> this is terrible and i and i took it off the wall and i came out of the bathroom with it and sean goes what are you doing i'm going uh, i'm sorry i hate this i'm taking it home i'm going to burn it i will give you credit for the next, oh my goodness for the next and she was like oh, well you know because she understood yeah yeah stands because yeah, yeah. I've gone back to people's house before after I've sold a painting and and taken off of the wall and brought it home and repainted it. Oh, so wow. no, I'm not uh you know, I I'm I'm Those I'm, are some high standards you have. I mean that is really Well, I'm getting better. Yeah. So, you know, I can see where my mistakes were from from before. But what about just having compassion from for the Julie that was 20 years ago doing the best she could. <laughs> Not you know? a bit. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> no, sometimes, sometimes, no, because sometimes I'll have hit it like the important part, not the skillful part, because I definitely don't think that skill, like some of my favorite artists are artists with no technical skill oh, okay. whatsoever. So that's not by any means the like how i yeah. you know how, what it is it's if it's if it's right or not yeah the clarity if it if you yeah. found clarity on that yeah. piece yeah so do you feel like for the rest of your life you'll just be humbly trying to become better at painting and i don't know if i'm so humble okay <laughs> yeah well yeah but but you're saying like i don't I have a long ways to go. Like I I'm hope, not, I, I, haven't I, hope I have a long way to go. Yeah, Cause yeah. what would happen if you went, if you went, Oh, now I know everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then I'd get a reality TV show and run for president. Right. I, but, only I can fix this. But what limitations do you feel like you have what, with regards to painting? I mean, it seems uh, like you can render anything that you want is from my perspective do you feel like you have limitations in your rendering ability oh yeah really oh yeah but in some ways it's useful that i didn't get skill early hmm. because if the paintings are perfect then usually they don't make me happy hmm. either there's some there's something else there's something else there, some balance of like fucked upness and and like perfect isn't good. Do you, I mean, what kind of things do you struggle with internally just to keep on track, to keep working? I mean, is it a struggle at all or do you just, is it just completely natural? The struggle is keeping my chunks of time together okay. and as long as, and, and keeping like a schedule Okay. So the I guess that's the like the structure in your life. Yeah, I need I need structure and no distraction and I need, you know, but I need to like stop painting and then go and dig in the garden. Yeah. You know, I need that to get out all the, you know, cuz you have to cuz it's being careful, little small control muscle work and, you know, da da da. So, getting out there like afterwards with a shovel and a bunch of dirt is like, yeah, okay. Like to get the other like a release. Yeah, yeah the other side of it. Yeah, but I, one thing I'll mention that I wanted to mention earlier was I'm just I'm so impressed with the life that you've created here and the fact that you and Fran built your house and it's just like it's something it inspires me to the oh, kind of life that I'd like to have. Thank you. Yeah, I like building things a lot. Yeah. 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 And and uh so if I've designed a couple other things that Fran one Fran's just building now. Oh and really? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I mean, I've done it before and, and I really, it's the same thing. So like before, before we built the house, I went around, I always carried a measuring tape and uh, we just, well, every time I got to a room, well, actually I've been doing this for years. Whenever I get to a room that I like the, sh- that, oh, you walk oh. in a room and it feels really good. Okay, what are the dimensions that make this so I'd measure it and try to figure out, like, you know, what it is in the proportions. And, like, see, this this building, it was old jail it's it's got it's got it's a lot of double squares so i did double squares in the house too they people talk about the fibonacci the the golden ratio you know but but so so lots of times the way i'll do it is set up pieces of cardboard and chairs and like create a space and then feel it and then you know see what's exactly the shape of the space in the shape of the space like i was talking about the shapes in the painting the shape of the space is how it feels is not just governed by its dimensions but it's governed by uh the material like this is like 13 or 14 inches of cast cement when they would in they like cast it like in 1918 or something and and they would throw in like basalt boulders and pieces of farm machinery and stuff so it has a there's a weight to it so the shape of the room feels different with the weight and thickness of the mm. wall than it would if you'd built a four inch you know two by four wall yeah 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 so so when i was it was the same thing like so I'd go stand next to a wall that was stucco over adobe and then stand next to a wall that was stucco mm. over frame with foam insulation and they feel differently and I don't you can't see the difference but you can feel the difference and it has to do with it's the same thing with the weight of what I was saying like a little spot of red is way heavier than a larger spot, well, depending on the shade, of, yeah. of green or how, you know, a piece of, like, in the collages where I'm using um, iron or bronze or something with paper, you know, you can balance those things. I'm just so impressed with how detailed and present you are in your life. I don't know. I don't know if that that's terribly common but it seems like you're looking at everything you're feeling everything in your life and it's all being soaked in and processed and it's important so well like i'm just paying attention yeah yeah but i mean it just i don't i think in today's world it's easy not to pay attention to anything i mean you could just be on your phone or be disconnected you know? right that's what that's why i don't have a phone yeah or kids <laughs> you're devoted to your to your yeah, art you yeah know? and yeah. your life yeah which it's all the same yeah and you can't do it in or i can't do it in pieces some people have those compartments in their minds you know yeah and and i just don't have that and i can't create it i can't i can't not think about so you know how people can do that and i go wow that would be so useful to have a compartment that Mm. i could stuff that thing in that i don't want to think about but there are no compartment i don't have that you know i guess just for my own life it makes me think about just moving through the world and thinking in a more meaningful way about everything and just being more observant like you're talking about it just seems like a richer life than well, you only, sleepwalking, right? It's, well, you only get one chance, yeah. right? So, or I'm assuming. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going. What do you know? I'm going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always thought that, like, okay, my idea of, <laughs> of, of the afterlife would be, like, you'd get up to the pearly gates and every question you ever, that I ever, ever had, yeah. I could, like, get St. Peter and he'd, like, have to tell me yeah. the answers to all that shit that's been, like, making me crazy since yeah, yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. And it's sort of the same, the same stuff. Like I remember when I was five, my mom told me about that there was no end to the universe. And I remember like going out on the back porch and sitting there for hours and hours, like trying to imagine like what's, what's infinity, what's, 
you know, endlessness. And it was like, all I got was like a big headache. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and it's just the same now. Yeah. 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 What are some of these other questions that you still struggle with? <laughs> I'm well, I found out the answer to one of them. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> well, it was like, you so to wear, how come you, out of the uh, wash, you don't get your same socks, the number of socks that you put in is yeah. always less. Okay. And so our washing machine in Austin, when we, it broke, and, and Fran took off that uh, agitator thing, yeah. and there they all were, down in the bottom, oh under the agitator, a whole, like, a whole... Whack of socks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now there's Google too. Oh, right. So I can get a you lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> so it's an interesting. I was going to ask you about, you know, it's. Though Google lies, and I'm, I was always assuming that St. Peter didn't. Well, oh, okay. Well, the, the, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. would be ideal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you Google something and it's like there's just so much horseshit. Yeah, you have who, to spend who, all this time. Who sits around and makes this shit up? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, who has the time to decipher all that, right? No, who has the time to make it all up? Oh, well. Right? Yeah, somebody that's not using their life very well. I <laughs> um, and talking about specifics, it's like interesting that your work is so incredibly specific, but it's like really endless interpretations, right? D- yes. That's, and that's, that's what I was saying. If it's right or not, it's, it's like, if I close it off, then it's not right. Mm. If you look at it and there's only one answer, then it's not right. So when I was talking about my older work that, yeah, maybe it's not technically good, but it brings up a question Mm -hmm. that everybody would give a different answer to. So that's what I consider and not uh, just other people, but that if I go back, yeah. you know, and quite often I'll go back and and see something that I haven't seen in a while and get a completely different, you know, mm. I'll, it'll set off a whole new chain of thoughts. And one of my favorite things is when people explain my paintings to me and they'll think of stuff that is like – that. You know, even though I'm working for a whole, like, month or two that I'm looking at the paintings, excuse me, when I'm thinking of this and that and this and that and connecting the dots. And and so I would have thought, I would have thought of, like, a big chunk of possibilities, but they'll come with something completely different. I'll go, oh, my God, that's right. I didn't, I didn't see that, you know, it's, but that's my favorite thing. Yeah. So because you're... then it's really a success mm. because it's completely – so one of the one of the ways like I figure out um, – well, Fran and I always have a game when we're in museums. It's like, okay, what would you steal from this room and what would you steal from this yeah, room, yeah, yeah. right? And so the pay – like if you, if you didn't – had never seen – work by this artist before had no idea how much it cost and we're seeing it in a complete vacuum right yeah. like that's the game yeah right and so that's the way i try to approach looking at art and usually how i do like one of the things is if the wall text got separated from the painting mm-hmm. Would you still feel the way you do about the painting? Yeah. Like how much does context change your experience? And I think the really great work is work that you don't need the context. It doesn't matter where it came from. You just see it and you go, <gasps> mm. and, and more importantly, it's not just a like, aha, it's when you come back a year later, and then again, three years later, each time you get, <gasps> yeah, well, ideally, that would be the kind of work you'd want to hang in your home, right? That you can live and grow with over the years. Right. So if you're, if potentially the images, compositions kind of loosely come from, like you were saying, behind the veil, and you start trying to realize those, and it's like a puzzle but then you're saying, you said a minute ago that you are actually then, while you're creating it, thinking about a lot of things, too. Oh, right. So the images, like, so 
part of it will come, but sometimes when I say it comes from there, sometimes it's just a couple of blobs. Okay. Right? And and then, so it's different depending on the oil painting or why the collage, like using collage elements in the gouache paintings is useful is, is it's... Like, so you pick up this and it makes you think of this and you pick up this and it makes you think of this. And so there's a little trail of crumbs. It's not a blank canvas, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And then what I learned in the collage and the printmaking and then, I'll you know, I'll go on binges of doing little boxes with 3Ds and, you know, or... You know, sometimes I'm, it's it's like I'll get working on a project around in the yard and I'll just move something, some sticks around and then, oh, wait, that reminds me of. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm looking at, you know, like, so the painting I just started, there's a duck in it. <laughs> yeah. And... And I'm like, why am I painting this duck? I don't paint ducks. And then I started thinking, and then the duck came clearer and clearer. And it was this duck that we were down in uh, Palacios. And, it, and I'm like sitting in a chair and looking out at this uh, like sort of scrub land down, down near the bay. And these ducks fly in and they've got these bright orange feet and they look like geese. They've got big goose-like bills and they fly in and they settle on the telephone wires so they're perching on the telephone wires and i didn't know ducks perched i like what and and then they started tweeting and so i was then they flew away and i'm telling fran like so i just saw these ducks and they had like orange bills and bright or bright orange feet and they were perched on the telephone wires and they were tweeting and he's going you're so full of shit like (laughs) and then 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 later that day the ducks came and like he's going oh my god (laughs) and i and i called a friend of mine who who, uh kina who who's who's like a bird person i'm talking she goes yeah, Julie, like those are the black bottom uh, Mexican whist- whistling Mexican black bottom. Or I yeah. can't remember the name of them. Right, but right. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. And everybody who lived there knew about these yeah. these ducks. And it was only that I'd never heard of perching whistling ducks. That, so, every, so it's one of those moments where, okay, so... I think one of the things that screws up the world is assumptions. Yeah. Right? And especially the assumptions that are so deep and bred in the bones that you it never ever occurs to you that they're assumptions. You think that that's just the truth and that's right. the way things are. So one of the, you know, when I'm saying if it's right and if you can get lots of stories out of it that means it sort of makes you break an assumption so this painting i'm doing i realized oh it's the assumption duck yeah (laughs) okay i guess what i want to try to dig into a little bit more is you start with a composition maybe that's all it is and then these elements start clarifying themselves and they do have meaning to you i mean it's like the your pieces do have you know what they mean to you, but you you wouldn't necessarily tell someone that, right? Well, and they and it, well, I wouldn't because what what they mean changes, and then sometimes. So I'm working on them for a month or two. So so they'll so the meaning changes to me. I'll be thinking of this, and then you know I'll think of different things later, and. I try to leave them open, but sometimes I get angry or, and I start getting ham fisted yeah. or just cause I like to crack myself up. Sure. Sometimes I'll make, you know, like I'll put, okay. So for instance, um, that one eating Warhol's lunch, like I totally started with a complete geometric background and then I had three blobs and then. So one of the blobs turned into a pair of bowls. And then that made me think of, there was an Annabelle Karachi 
I hope probably pronouncing his name wrong, this Renaissance painter that did a painting that I love, and it's just a guy eating a bowl of beans. And I've always wanted to do a version of that painting, so I put beans in the bowls. But then the beans were brown, and the it didn't go with the composition, and then I needed red for the composition. So I, I then I remembered, oh, when I was a kid, that horrible Campbell's cream of tomato soup that yeah. your mother would feed you, and like so, I went to the to the market, and they still make it. Yeah. So I bought a can of it, and I <laughs> opened it up, and I brought it to the studio, and I like used it exactly to paint that color red. And then, so then it's two people, and they've got these bowls of Campbell's tomato soup, and and I and there's some, and then I realized, oh. They're eating Warhol's lunch because I was thinking of yeah. Campbell's. And then so that cracked me up so much that I made that the title of the painting. And then so I sort of closed the door, but I couldn't uh, help I it because I could yeah, not yeah, yeah, leave yeah, yeah, that yeah. joke <laughs> alone. And I hate Warhol. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Um, I was wondering, do you have do you have rules? That oh, kind of yeah. constrict what you can do and can't oh, do. Absolutely. Either, yeah. Could you share some? Oh yeah. So, so my rules are it, like for the collages. So I'm not allowed to use a computer to blow anything up or down. I can't scan it or, mm-hmm. or print. You know, because then everything would be in the game and it would be a completely open end game, and I yeah. go nuts. So I have to use as the paper I, as I find it. But I'm also not allowed to wreck any good books, mm-hmm. so I have to use like um, every most of the paper I get, like get uh, fire, flood, worms, and children. So I get a lot of stuff from fires. I get flood, like I'll buy mm-hmm. boxes of paper with mold all over them. The Japanese woodblock prints that I use, they printed them on um, paper made out of mulberry tree mm-hmm. bark i think the bark um and so it's really light and it's really strong but the worms eat it mm. so i'll buy all the stuff with worms in it mm-hmm. so those are my rules just that's just pertains to collage you don't have any rules about painting or no mm. i can't think of any yeah and what about your palette do you have a limited palette or do you use all the colors I'll, I'll go so i get like serial crushes okay. on colors and there's a few that are like old, you know, out standbys, and then, and then colors that I totally hated before. Like I'm working back. Like for instance, pink. My whole like since I was a little tiny kid, I've hated the color pink because yeah. it was like Barbie and you know all all that girly shit that yeah, I, yeah. just made me crazy. I hated Marilyn. I hated Barbie. So I hated pink. Yeah. And until like, so one, one morning when we were living over um, behind the courthouse, we lived in this house that was next to a church. And then there were all these pecan trees in the backyard. So I was right at dawn. I opened my eyes and all the trees in the backyard were pink. And so then I started painting pink sticks. And right around, sometime around then, we had gone down to a beach in South Texas where all of the man of war had beached themselves in this like giant jellyfish sort of like wow. Jonestown thing. Wow. And they were dying and they were pink and purple and, you know, green. Yeah, yeah. And so, so that's sort of, see, like that's sort oh, of yeah, what, yeah. what started those off and and so once i was playing with pink then the pink went from the tree so i painted pink trees and then then that led to pink sticks pink butts and then (laughs) that led to the pink cakes so i did a whole series of Mm. cakes and so when i was talking about three five seven or nine so lots of times in a composition if there's people you need things so things that are the same size as heads. So it's cakes, flounder, and chickens are all the same size as heads or severed heads. Can so they can go on the table. Yeah. Right? So I'm making a composition but certain elements um so this came from this came from the beach, this came from the backyard. This came from a painting I saw when I was 
eight, you yeah, know, yeah. this came from a fairy tale. So a lot of times, like, so because my paintings are representational, it says, oh, so this symbolizes this. And this is because they get dragged around museums and somebody's always going, oh, the painter meant this was symbolizing this. And yeah, right. I always want to follow them around and go, no, it doesn't. The pa- You know, that they had the red pomegranate there not to symbolize virginity, but because it needed a spot of red in the painting yeah. there, you know. Much it, simpler explanation. Yeah, or they could both be true or something. Yeah. But it depends on because everybody grew up with a different experience. The idea that one image is going to symbolize the same thing universally, it doesn't make sense. Like, so I grew up, what, we weren't any particular religion, so none of that meant anything to me. So mm-hmm. when I went and saw these paintings, it didn't matter to me that I didn't know who Jesus was. And, you know, it was like the painting either worked or the painting different work. And what the subject matter of the painting was almost irrelevant to me, which, which it is really like, so I grew up, I had this great aunt that was, uh, she traveled around the world and she would translate fairy tales from mm-hmm. different languages and I was her guinea pig. And these fairy tales were like the old timey, like that would end, and the shark king ate the lovely princess. Yeah. The end, right? So, and there were magic fish, right? And the magic fish would give you, uh, you know, your choice of, you know, you would help the magic fish and then it would tell you you could have what, you know, three wishes. Right. So, so when I see a fish, to me, I'm thinking either like magic fish. The symbolism is like fairy tale symbolism instead of loaves and fishes, Christian stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like so. But a fish, it can also just be like, whoa, that's a pretty fish, you know. Or I want to eat it or I want to catch it or, you know, it doesn't – the fixed meaning of symbols – that's kind of related to assumptions, right? You're oh, assuming yeah. you know what something is uh, oh, yeah, already. I, I, I hadn't made that connection. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> right. Just Thank be, you. be open. <laughs> is there anything that you feel like you'd want to share that you've figured out in your life that you just feel like you wish people understood better or knew? You know, <laughs> just about, about living or being an artist. Is that, is that a ridiculous question? <laughs> <laughs> what tickled me so much oh, about that question? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know, because it was like, because in my mind, this little dump truck just packed up, backed up into my mind, and the and the and the the back of it flopped open, <laughs> and, the, and it went, <laughs> and then all this stuff. <laughs> okay. Right. No, I'm sorry. That's that's like. That's like too big of a, uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> Yeah. that's too big of a, um, you know, I don't have any words of wisdom. <laughs> no, you don't no. really garden garden garden. Yeah. Yeah. If you put your hands in dirt all, every day, you'll be a happy person. Do you find yourself mentoring other artists ever? Do people, do other artists come to you for advice? Oh, I'm, I love telling people like this goes with this and this goes with this and don't put that with that <laughs> or, yeah. or else this will happen. Yeah. Te- like technical and like, I'm always open to that. Yeah. And, and actually in the, in the show that's up now at, um, yeah, let's talk the, about that. Yeah. So, so one of the things, so we get tour groups in here a lot and kids mm-hmm. will come in and, and I've noticed People don't always know how the paintings are made and they can't really look at them. And like, you know, they'll look at them and think it came, you know, out of a computer or, you know, not be able to differentiate like, oh, this piece was made with a, you know, using a brush and oil. This was like that. Yeah. And they don't always notice the details right away. So what I did was... uh, I, they gave me a whole room about this size at the museum, and I made a three-channel video, and I uh, using so 
what I did was did close-ups of the painting, showing the detail, and so you could see mm. this is, you know, this is how I made it. And then included in that was shots of me working in the studio and doing the different steps yeah. in the, in the you know, so that when, after you watch it, you have so, you have a better idea of how it got made and hopefully you would like so you when you get details and i blow them up so they're nine feet high and 18 feet wide yeah you're gonna notice like you're gonna go wait a minute i didn't see that sure and then go back so my hope is that they will go it's called the close-up room and and i hope that they go in the close-up room and see see the videos and then go back and look at the actual paintings again like looking for the details and plus it was really fun i just i did it all with music like mm. so with the same soundtrack with it so there's that no you work to really kind the, of in a yeah way. yeah i just took that and so and then i collect so because everything is a collage to me so i took the details from the paintings and then i had them in there in my indesign program and then oh i could bring in a detail from this painting and did this and so i ended up making three videos of collages of collages oh yeah of, yeah 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 so this is at the el paso museum of art right and, and it's up till april 7th okay and just share with me your thoughts about seeing this, what it's worked from the past five years. Like, how do you feel about seeing it all up in a museum? How does it feel having a show in a museum? I'm really happy with it. They did, I, I, I just, it's a really cool museum. Like, right, the old El Paso is is just a wonderful, it's, it's a cool old city. And the museums, everybody that uh, I worked with there were really really professional good to work with the director uh victoria ramirez she's like she's got enough brains you could chop up her brain and divide it between six people and they'd all still be really smart Mm -hmm. so it was it was very good i mean how does it feel just personally in your career does it feel like an interesting point i've been doing uh this one this one, yeah, because I because it's a forty eight piece show. Yeah, yeah. So this is like the largest. I had a couple of you know. I mean, I've had other shows that tour around to you know. Usually, I do one every year or so. I did okay. one in Abilene, and uh, we traveled from one in Lubbock and one you know just sort of small town. This one goes to Virginia when it's through oh, okay. in El Paso. And they're looking for a third venue for it. Well, congratulations. Thanks. That's really and cool. it's been fun talking to you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you too. Thanks for your time. Sure. And hopefully we'll maybe we'll do it again someday. Yeah. And talk more.